while quietly meditating one evening, this mental conversation spontaneously began. I am the historian. I hear you clearly. Welcome. I've done a research study on you. You have an interesting background. I'm about to turn in this report. Would you like to add something? Add something? Really? Like what? Anything you might think suitable. Something unusual, perhaps. How do you even answer a question like this? What happened next was most curious. It seemed like, and how should I describe this, like something started rummaging through my mind at high speed, and I suddenly blurted out, Well, when I was a kid, my dad took me to a science fiction movie, one that involved ETs. Driving home that night after the movie, I kept looking out the car window, hoping to see a flying saucer. While the movie portrayed the ETs as hostile, for some reason, I knew they were friendly and smart. Interesting. Perfect. I like this guy. Now between you and me, I don't know where that answer came from. The information was truthful. That actually did happen. But over 60 years ago. And I haven't thought about it since the night it happened. I think... When they ask you a question, they can sift through your mind better than you can. It's been about a year since my ET interview now, and I guess you might say a telepathic relationship has been developing. Some of what they tell me, though, I find enigmatic, and I hesitate to mention these things till I have a better sense of what they mean. But let me go over one of these in brief. Recall, I write down whatever bits of mental conversation I perceive. But when I go back over my notes, I'll discover predictions that came true. And I'll realize then I didn't understand what they were talking about until after the event occurred. It makes me wonder, does knowledge of the future destabilize it in some way? Or is the future simply too confusing and it cloaks the human mind in a cloud of obscurity? But these are just theories. But my point here is, their notion of time confuses me. So I just do what I've always done. Record the mental conversations I have in my notes and wait to see what happens next. Sometimes, and this is the payoff, I get glimpses of understanding how they think and work. I'd like to go over a few of these right now. Let's start with this one. There's more to telepathy than just hearing words said in your mind. And I can't think of a better way to introduce some of the basic concepts than go over an example practice session. These seem to occur in the middle of the night. <laughs> they never tell you to wake up. They just start talking right in the middle of deep sleep. Let's play match. Say a word. Mm, what? Think of a word. Um, train? Track. Uh, car? Road. Mm, green? Grass. Color. I heard both words said together. River? 
Hello? Water. Hands. Fingers. Now let's switch. Baseball. That. Office. Desk. Wood. Floor. Pencil. Paper. Now just see without saying. See without saying? Hmm. I guess he wants me to visualize something. I'll imagine moving about the bedroom here at night. My eyes were closed the entire time. Curtains, windowsill. Wow, pretty good. I'll try imagining myself outside. Trees, sidewalk, sky. Wow. Do you want to switch? Okay, but I'm not very good with visuals. I waited patiently to see what I might pick up. Wow, beautiful cube. And now a, a triangle. Your turn. Here I got tricky. I chose something I didn't know the name of. A movie actor. I held his image in my mind the best I could. There was no answer, but I sensed something digging through my mind for details. The way the actor spoke. Let's start from there. His characteristic tone. Well, he's got you outnumbered. The way he moved his face. The clothes he wore in the movies. Western clothes. Horses. John. John Wayne. <laughs> wow, impressive. What a cool game. P.S. I presume this mental digging in someone else's mind is what a higher level student can achieve. Next, I focused on the intense blackness of my mind and nothing else. The voice came right back. The cosmos, a mental world, God singing. I don't understand the question. Oh my God, this blew my mind. They enjoy practicing through games and they enjoy good clear communication. If the person speaking to you isn't clear and continuous, you'll experience a dreamlike mishmash. You've heard what that sounded like. To the listener, it sounds like you've fallen asleep. <laughs> Which I guess is pretty rude. Another thing that seems common is to hear two words said together as one. I gather that's the telepathic medium trying to find the clearest translation for you, which is sometimes best done using two words. This trips me up. It's like a bump in the road. I have to settle and refocus myself to get back into the groove. In the case of John Wayne, I noticed the individual dug the actor's name out of my mind, even though I didn't remember it. And lastly, and this made a big impression, when I focused on the mental blackness, he instantly responded with four interpretations, the cosmos, the mental world, God singing, and I don't understand the question. In other words, he had four definitions for a mental state I considered to be nothing. With that, I started to see for the first time glimpses of what their telepathy, combined with projected visuals, might be like. They use both telepathic language and projected mental visuals, like virtual reality, I guess. Oh, wow. Amazing. Now here's another big insight. When all of this started, I thought ETs were like little gray aliens, humanoids walking on two legs, flying around in flying saucers, and having big electronic eye lenses. But what I didn't get, and it took a long time to realize, was they could leave their physical bodies at any time and project their intellects elsewhere. Why bother flying to another solar system to meet somebody when you can simply project your mind into their room? or directly into their skull and have a telepathic conversation. 
There's a related concept here, too. The universe is a big place, and even if they can instantly travel its length and breadth mentally, they still have to send their mind to a known destination. I believe the E.T. scouts I mentioned previously were the ones that discovered me, and it was they who established me as a target destination. Once done, Follow-on meetings became almost routine. The reverse is also true. Once I had been contacted, I could telepathically reconnect to them by simply recalling the words they said. I used those to create my destination. For many years now, I've heard the term adhering as a description for a good telepathic connection. I thought of this as two mental bubbles coming in contact with one another. With the telepathy occurring across the region of shared contact. But over the last few months, I participated in a group conversation where the minds of all the participants seemed to meld into a kind of mental energy ball. It occurred to me later, for this melding to occur, Everyone's energy levels needed to be harmonious. In other words, my energy levels needed to be compatible. I had no notion of this during the interview process or in the months that followed. Perhaps this is why they consider themselves an elite organization. Not necessarily because of importance, but rather in terms of compatibility. Everything summarized so far has been about communicating with ETs. But I soon grew to realize, through telepathy, I was becoming opened. I started hearing personalities quietly observing me out of curiosity. He's the new mathematician. A fine young recruit. You hear these things and shake your head. A fine young recruit? I'm now retired, but they think of me as being young? Then on another occasion at my desk, I heard, Take a chance and have your name said among the stars. These things come out of nowhere. Then one night watching TV, my thoughts were loudly interrupted. You are being visited by Madeline. <laughs> Who's Madeline? I didn't know anybody by that name. You are being visited by Madeline yet. Oh my god, that's my aunt, now deceased 20 or more years. We had a short conversation. That's when I started to realize I was hearing more than ETs now. My telepathy was bordering on what some might call Spirit channeling. But maybe they're the same thing. And there's more. If you recall, the ETs previously said they were going to open my third eye. Now, I didn't pay too much attention to that at the time. What does that even mean? But they must have followed up because I became aware of two distinct funnel shapes within my meditative mental space. One located directly above my eyes and forehead, the other around my heart or abdomen. I believe these are two chakras or psychic portals mentioned in yogic texts. From what I found on the internet, the chakras are described as wheels or disc shapes, but that might be an oversimplification because what I perceived were definitely three-dimensional funnels the one at my forehead extending outward, away from my line of vision, and the heart one extending inward, almost like a gravity well. Since everything I'm doing here and reporting I consider an experiment, I'd like to report how I became aware of this chakra. Sort of amazing. In the early days of my remote viewing class, 
After I had several successful and two completely wrong off-target sessions, I started wondering why some of my perceptions were accurate, while others not even close. I was doing the same thing every single time. What was the difference? What was I missing? It was at that moment the vision of the funnel appeared in front of my forehead. An arrow or pointer was aimlessly scraping along the nearby edges of the funnel. Now this part was very clear. The pointer was scraping off fragments that drifted toward my mind's eye. When those fragments got very close, I recognized each one as a perception of some kind, a word, a feeling, a visual image. Then I had a flash of intuitive understanding. The arrow was like my mental focus. While I was trying to perceive my remote target, my mental focus was not aimed properly, so it just picked up random bits of local thought. I had to aim my focus toward the middle, toward the empty hole at the far end, the one spot where the arrow wouldn't touch anything. Needless to say, when I focused there, not only were my remote viewing perceptions correct, but any they kicked up along the inner walls of the tube were also correct. <laughs> what a revelation! Everyone can think through a mental conversation, the words and sentences they want to say in their mind, right now. And that's half of a telepathic ability right there. It's the hearing that takes practice. I played my little game for years, practicing and recording what I heard in my notes. And people that do spirit channeling they also practice for years. The results, to my mind, are the same. You learn to hear and converse mentally. But I should tell you, one of the problems I kept confronting was what you might call reception dropouts, where my hearing would suddenly go dead mid-sentence. I always found it awkward trying to recover from that situation, and I tried all sorts of things to overcome it. I even tried freezing my body motion and stopping my breathing to hear better. <laughs> Lack of oxygen just made things worse. One night, I silently complained about this before falling asleep. To my surprise, this conversation began. Would you like to take some lessons in telepathy? Oh my god, yes. Try this. Listen carefully. Tell me what sound you hear. At first I noticed nothing. Then I heard a single pure tone. Uh, okay, I think I hear it. It sounds like... like a pure tone, like a sine wave. Move it to your mouth. Move it to my mouth? Hmm. I guess she wants me to hum it or whistle it. I did. Try this one. I didn't think I heard anything this time. Can you... I'm not hearing it. Can you amplify the signal? I listened again. It only seemed slightly higher in tone, but that minor increase was harder for me to detect. I whistled it. Try this one. This was a low bass tone. Easy. I hummed it. Now this. This one pulsed. Easy. Now, identify where you hear the sound within the space of your mind. Left. Right center. Right rear. I think this exercise was to point out that your mind is like a three-dimensional space, not a two-dimensional blackboard. 
Now, say these numbers out loud. 1112. 1112. 1112. 1112. 1131. 1131. Ah, your eyes shifted to one side when saying numbers out of sequence. That is causing your dropouts. Your thinking with your eye muscles. Oh my god. Every time I moved my eyes, it interfered with my attention for just a moment. And that was making my reception choppy. The takeaway was obvious. I needed to decouple my thinking from my body movements. Twenty years I struggled with this. I never would have figured this out. What's that old saying? When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So this was a quick summary of what I picked up over the last year, interacting with ETs and through telepathy. But there are also incidents in my journal that convey more of the feelings I experienced, and I'd like to go over a few of these now. I chose these in particular because they gave new information or clues about whatever it was I was dealing with. Let's pick up the story on April 19th. 2019, 11 days after my ET interview. I got to bed at around 12.30 a.m. and lay awake, thinking about the interview. I kept wondering what was going to happen next. It's been a while, and I asked my mind to reconnect me with the ET that set up my interview. To my surprise, he responded almost immediately. Hello, Don. You have my mind. <laughs> I was so enamored with this simple statement. In the past, telepathic connections often used the word adhering to describe a good, stable connection. But now, for the first time, I was experiencing how an advanced culture politely introduced a connection. You have my mind. <laughs> I just love it. Hi. I, I just wanted to make contact to be sure I left things on the proper footing to proceed. Honestly, I'm getting excited about working with your advanced culture. Is everything okay? Thank you, Don, for your interest in managing things from your end. But there's no need for concern, as it is we who need to drive things forward. You will hear from us shortly as we prepare to close the deal. Okay, great. I guess that's all I had to say. Thank you again. His words seemed so smooth and it actually didn't occur to me I was trying to manage things from my end till he said it. And his statement, it is we who need to drive things forward, is not the way I talk. So casual but elegant. I closed the conversation with something like, okay, uh, let's disconnect for now. <laughs> Which seemed so clumsy after I said it. Obviously, I need to learn some telepathic etiquette. I finally fell asleep, but some hours later I heard the words, Messages for you. When you hear these words in deep sleep, you find yourself transitioning to full consciousness in what seems slow motion. Um, yeah, please go ahead. What are the messages? Hi, Don. I'm the Magistrate. What the heck is a Magistrate? I wasn't sure, but his cheerful attitude tickled me and I decided to play along. P.S. Magistrate. Definition. An official entrusted with the administration of the laws. Well, hello. Anything I can do for you while you're here? Very sweet. I see you are adept. High mental activity. You ought to do quite well financially. I got the impression I was dealing with a jovial accountant. There was a charm to the way he spoke. 
I need to help you resolve the debts to your government. More words were said, but I had no idea what he was talking about. Thinking on this the next day, I realized there might be some legal implications to my ET transfer. I might be considered property in some form, and different beings or associations may obsess over such things, or even attempt to interfere to gain leverage. My new supervisors must have sent in a magistrate, so everything would be squeaky clean. Two days later, on April 21st, 2019, I started climbing the basement steps to get ready for bed. As I turned off the lights, I heard, We need to talk. I hear you clearly. We understand you are important and worthy of additional consideration. You have the ability to travel through time with your mind, which leads us to believe you may be better suited working in our logistics department at an increased salary. I got the impression he had a department of remote viewers scanning the future, trying to assist with their decision-making process. Well, <laughs> what a concept. What troubled me, though, was his voice wasn't that of the original E.T., and he sounded sort of impatient. Later that evening, lying in bed, I considered the counteroffer. Was this another form of test? And to be honest, I wasn't charmed by his voice like the original E.T. Since I was operating without visuals, their tone and vibe were important. Furthermore, I liked the idea of working with technology and not necessarily in a think tank. At that point, I became aware of a whispered side conversation. He's been given a second proposal. Well, that means we have to act quickly. Don, Magistrate. We need to know if you're still serious. Well, I've been given a second offer. And it seems only fair I have time to consider it. No further words were said, and I soon fell asleep. At some point later on... Don, we'd like to sweeten our original offer. Would you be interested in managing a division of scientifically-minded intellects similar to your own? They're untrained, but capable. You'd be working off-planet at a new facility. Wow, this is all moving so fast. I certainly felt flattered, but I had very little information on which to base a decision. I decided to go with my gut feel. I accepted the original, now-enhanced E.T. offer. There was just something about his voice that made me feel comfortable, and I trusted those vibes. Okay, it's done. We spoke to the Board of Trade. That was the last thing I remember. I'd like to leave you with one last thought. And this one's more of an open question. After experiencing many mental communications like the ones I've shown here, I started to wonder why they were all focused on telepathic hearing. Well, things started to change right after that. One night I woke up perceiving a beautiful drawing of a horse galloping toward me. The image was drawn in my mind like neon lighting on a black background. When I complimented them on their artwork, they told me, We want to see you ride the horse. I didn't understand, and they said this several more times, and each time I felt like this was some sort of joke. Finally, it galloped away, leaving me to my empty mind and I fell asleep. But thinking on this weeks later, it dawned on me. They just wanted me to mount and ride the horse with my imagination, to combine my imagination with theirs. Then there was that other one, where I'd find myself driving a car or motorcycle in the same little town, through lots of shady trees. 
I felt uncomfortably lost and refused to participate, having no idea where I was or where I was supposed to go. But all I needed to do was take control of the situation and have fun exploring these new environments. But I never did. Because I hit some sort of wall. The limits of my attention span, confidence and focus. That got me wondering. If they can project mental visuals, were these sorts of scenarios used for adolescent visual development? in preparation for more purposeful, technical exchanges among adults. Instead of wearing virtual reality goggles, could these beings project scenarios into another's mind, like theatrical productions, where you not only watch, but participate as an actor in someone else's stage play? If this might be true, and maintaining your attention and overcoming your fear of feeling out of place seem to be the key points. I like the ideas of increased mental focus and confidence and exerting greater control over my mental energies. Is this where we're all headed? I wonder, what are your thoughts on this issue? I'd like to hear. Let me know in the comments below.